Ever wondered what Teochew food actually is and where it came from? Dating back all the way to 1800 from Taochou Prefecture in China's Guangdong province, we're going on a heritage-filled journey around Singapore to explore the flavors of Teochew cuisine. Food Finders! And welcome back to Food Finders, another episode. And today we're going to take a little bit of a historical peek of what makes up the majority of Chinese Singaporeans here. And that is Teochew food. And I think it's a little bit ironic that I, the foreigner, am going to be teaching some of the younger generation about the food of where uh, a lot of the Singaporean foods uh, manifested from, apparently. What is your dialect group, Gary? My dialect group, as far as I know, is Hokkien from Penang. I actually don't know if I'm more Hokkien or Teochew or I definitely know I'm not Canto. What, what do you think is the difference between Teochew and Hokkien food? I would feel Hokkien food is a bit more stir fry -y and very heavy on like soy sauce and punchy flavors and I feel Teochew side is a little bit more soupy based, clean, clean flavors, more attention into freshness versus intense flavors. All right, great. That's all the questions Seth has. That was a great learning experience, but now we're going to actually go try some of that Teochew stuff and get more in depth with the actual food. Let's go. So where exactly did Teochew cuisine originate from? It came from the Chaoshan region in the eastern part of China's Guangdong province. The earliest center of the Teochew community in Singapore town was at Bok Ki. This was the prime location situated at the belly of the carp which shaped the Singapore River. Teochew and Hokkien Tuakao bum boats were abundant at the Singapore River, transferring goods between ocean-going ships and storehouses at Bok Ki and Clark Ki. Many Teochews were Keelong bosses and still deal with seafood till this day. Aokang is also known as as a predominantly Teochew enclave, and many Teochew immigrants from China made up Aokang's population as early as 1800s. <laughs> We're here at Paradise Group Teochew restaurant in Takashimaya, specific location, but also they do sell dim sum. They got private rooms, they got really nice selection of wine. If you guys know anything about Paradise Group, they are synonymous for high quality, prestigious, finer quality uh, Chinese food specifically. Let's go inside and check what they have Teochew wise. Okay. All right, we're here at the first location. Some stuff I feel like I recognize, some stuff I have no idea. But before everything starts, I believe you have to drink this tea first and this will help cleanse everything. So here we go. So apparently it's some... <laughs> Why are you choking on tea? It went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> So it's a very heavily flavored pour with glutinous rice. It's apparently customary to have this tea before the food and there will be tea after the food as well. Well, that's awesome. That's things that I would never have guessed. Uh, so far, the service here, unlike that other episode, this woman is undoubtedly the most rude human being. Okay, this is probably the most expensive dish. There's no sauce. It is cold and they also provide you this, which is uh, to wash your hands after. So you can see there is some nice roe in there. And because it's cold, it's like they cooked it, they let the roe re-coagulate, uh, and then they chopped it. Mm, very roe-y. My wife would love this. She loves crab. Here's a fun fact while you're eating. In the early years, the Teochew immigrants settled mainly in the northern part of Singapore, specifically Sembawang, Upper Thompson, and Pongo. And many of them were actually in the seafood trade. They were fishermen. Hence, there is a lot of uh, fresh seafood dishes in Teochew cuisine. I do want to teach people how not to waste the legs of these crabs, because I see a lot of people just tossing this. Lots of meat in here. So you got your crab. You got your top little piece here and you can see there's this joint. So with your teeth, just bite off right underneath that joint. Like that. And then all you gotta do is just squeeze it. Ooh, 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 look at all that meat. Wow, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. All right. Good service. She's a looker too, so that helps. My wife would love this. It, it is a very clean tasting crab. So compared to like Singapore's pep black pepper crab or white pepper crab, it's not as messy. It's not like slap in the face 
flavor. Trio combination platter with tofu. This does look very fancy. So you're eating a sliced Irish fat duck, not just any duck, this is Irish, Irish fat duck, which are known as the Wagyu of duck, apparently. By order of the Peaky Blind. Mm, that duck is f***ing good. The thing with intestine that gets me is the thought of intestine. I think like as a Westerner, I can't get past it sometimes. But if you didn't tell me it was intestine, I didn't. And that's what I was trying to do earlier was just imagine I'm eating a very fatty piece of pork. Flavor wise, it's kind of the same. It's got a little bit of this pepperiness to it. And, and it's like just really fatty meat. Oh, very different. I think they did a roulade of the pork trotter because I don't know how you would get such a nice piece of pork trotter like that. The sauce just makes everything. Savory, umami mimi. The quality of the braised sauce, right? It really permeates the meat, the three different meats. So like you got the subtle taste of the duck versus the pork versus the intestine, which is I felt was a bit peppery. All right, so we're gonna try this noodle. Very interesting noodle, never seen anything like it before. Teochew style crispy, sweet and sour noodle. You sprinkle some sugar and then I like, just dip in like the uh, vinegar. Unique. Very unique. The noodle pancake itself is very textury. So the outside is really nice and crispy. The inside is really, really moist. On its own, nothing huge. I think very under the tongue, you know, very like delicate flavors. And then you add the sugar and the vinegar adds an interesting kind of depth of flavor to this. We're on to the last final dish, which is the dessert. Uh, I can see some genko nut and I don't know, I'm gonna take a wild guess. This is some sort of yam paste. Yam paste? This is Teochew uh, or ni. Huh? What do you say? What do you? Or ni. It is yam paste, but I heard horny. Oh, oh. And I was like, what, Seth? One last final tea. Did they say what tea it was? No, but I assume this is one of those tea that is supposed to uh, help you with digestion. More bitter than the first tea and not as flavorful. It's oolong tea. That's it? Yeah, that's it. It's oolong tea. Cut all of that out. If you guys are interested in the cold crab, you do have to pre-order this uh, so that they can actually prepare it a day ahead of time. That's it for this first location. We're gonna go to the second location and I will see you there. All right, we're here at the second place, uh, somewhere in Topayo, block 212. Hence the name 212 Teochew Cuisine. This place was originally opened by two brothers and they started off with a hawk store and then they somehow upgraded to a restaurant. So hopefully there's something there. Let's go check this place out. Holy <laughs> As you can see, the stuff here is huge. So the pot is known as a Jing Tai Lan, which is a unique art form combining sculpting, painting, copper smiting, and porcelain making into one. And then you have this, uh, I believe, some prawn balls of sorts. Lychee. And then we got braised platter of sorts. Uh, then we got like the red grouper. Okay, let's dig in. Pluck one of these balls. Oh, shit. So this is interesting. There's a little piece of lychee inside. There's like, you know, it's good prawn ball. The little like crispiness things on the outside, kind of got like a balachani taste to it, mixed with a little bit of that sweetness from the lychee. I think it's a very unique flavor. So we got like six sauces here as well. Now they didn't really quite explain any of this, but I also heard no service charge, no GST, 24 hour service. If you do come at night, there's an additional 20% off. It's only for the dim sum. All right, let me correct myself there. 20% off on the dim sum from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. Let's have some of this uh, steamboat now. The soup is like uh, really clean, really milky flavors. Not super intense in any way. It's very similar to the fish soup, except this one is milkier. All right, fun fact time. The first Teochews arrived in Singapore after 1819 were known to have come from the Riau Islands of Indonesia and Thailand. So most of the Teochews in Singapore came from Thailand and Indonesia. This platter here, which looks uh, very authentic. Combination four in one set. 
which has the uh, braised duck, frozen pig feet jelly. Yeah, it's pork trotters. And the other one is a, it's a, a shrimp actually, it's fried shrimp. They call it shrimp juju bear. Let's start off with the easy one, braised duck. High expectations for this one, particularly, but I don't think this is the Irish version. By order of the Peaky Blind. That's good. It's moist, not as moist as the Irish duck, but you get that duckiness to it. Prawn ball. It's not full prawn ball. It's actually like a meatball with prawn in it. It's like, I think kids will love this, this one. Now for the more questionable stuff, the pig trotter. It's a vinaigrette garlic sauce that's kind of poured on top of the pig trotter. I think uh, the pig trotter is a little bit on the firmer side, but it is a more traditional tasting, I feel. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get- Pork trotter jelly is unique to the Teochew food culture in Singapore. It originates from the Shantou province in China. This dish makes use of the uh, leftover or lower grade parts of the pork, uh, including the trotter meat and the skin. Okay, I have to admit, despite my facial expressions, the look of it is far worse than the taste. The taste is actually not too bad, and the jelly, once it gets a bit heated up in your mouth, it does melt. If you have really rich stuff, it's just got lots of gelatin in it, and that's a good sign of quality stock. This is just basically the cooled version of stock, so once it starts heating up, it does melt in your mouth, and then there is a very porky flavor that arrives from that. Okay, so we got the chef here from 212. He speaks Mandarin, and well, it's gonna be hard for me to communicate, so Seth, on the back end, <laughs> is actually going to speak on my behalf, and uh, well, he'll do the translation. Is this like a traditional Teochew? Dish?这不是潮州菜是吗？啊，这个是比较创意菜了。这这些都是传统呃潮州。啊，传统的潮州菜。OK，你是从哪里学你的煮法呃厨艺？啊，我是从中国潮州过来的。哦，你是潮州
Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. gelatin. Mm. Very fatty. The skin yeah. is very thick. Very and we say the jufu, the most important is the ingredient. The ingredient must be very fresh. A lot about fresh ingredients, yeah. keeping true to the original flavor of the mm. stuff and just yeah. adding a little bit of yeah. sauce. Then and next. I, I try the, the pao fan. This is the grupa and the. I saw some scallops in there. Scabbers. As well. All right. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Jack here was also saying that this was like fried rice. Fried rice mixed with the steamed rice because the fried rice make it more like a, a fragrant, you know, mm. the taste more stronger. Mmm, very sweet. The flavors is all very clean. Usually, traditional Teochew food, we're using the porridge, but the porridge, not many young generation they would like. Okay, let's try your signature. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Pure yeah. roll. Yeah, you can just suck it. Yeah, don't need to, yeah. Actually, not as spicy as I thought. At the beginning, we put the sea salt to marinate for two hours, and then we take it out. Then we put some like a uh, chili butter, small chili, and uh, wine, ah, coriander, yeah. small vinegar. La. The most okay. important is the garlic and soya sauce. There is a lot of roe in yeah, this. Yeah, roe. Yeah, <laughs> this especially specific. the red roe. Red roe for the roe crab is the best. Yeah, but yellow roe for cook the meat and the roe and the skin separate. Ah. We put in the minus 60 degree freezer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. This was in this the freezer? Is, this, uh, we put first and then take it out. Oh, yeah. oh, and oh, oh. Because before you cook, you put If the you crab. don't put the low, the meat and the shell, they will stick it together. Okay. Yeah. This one, I will allow you to try one. the... To go to yeah. Gonna, oh. yeah. This is the best when you mix up with the rice and then eat it. If you marry, yeah, if you want to have more children, then you eat more. Got a really big rowy piece here, but... Leave some for me. <laughs> mm. This has a lot more row yeah, than, than normal yeah, than than normal I've yeah, ever yeah. seen. Amazing, it's very okay. good. Another bite you. <laughs> yeah. Jack, obviously a busy man. Uh, he's gotta go. I appreciate yeah. you, um, Thank you. Yeah. teaching me all this and the history. Yeah. I think okay. that was very important. Yeah. I, think. Yeah. I think he has a strong concept of what he's aiming for here. This one is really good actually, but it's so deceiving because I actually thought that would be like a blood sausage, but it's actually majority squid. This is just quality, right? The size of this thing is massive and it's very fatty. I, I gotta give it to this thing though that is just unique and rare generally but also just the amount of row and i don't know how he is able to distinctly find the row that is red color versus the yellow this one had a lot of red color row i think overall everything has been really thought through wait, 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 get it. seth wants to come in here now i need to explain this from uh, someone who's more familiar with teochew cuisine in singapore like these dishes are not common at all like i think this is really the super authentic version from <laughs> So if you want like not the typical Singaporean Teochew stuff, like I think this place is really amazing yeah, to give you like the true flavor. Okay, anyway, step out. So we're here at the last place, uh, our Teochew Hu Tao Steamboat. This is a family-run business. The original one is from Bukit Mera and this is their first uh, expansion out of that original restaurant. So we're here to try it out and I'll let you know how it tastes. Et voila! We got the fish head steamboat over here. We got the oyster omelette also, aka the ocean. This is some kind of ho fan. Teochew fried kuei tiao. Okay, the kuei tiao look like ho fan, but sure. Penang one better. And then in front there we have steamed prawns. Look very fresh. First up, let's try the soup. It smells tangy actually. I'm seeing cabbages, yam, chunks of fish bone. Ooh. It's not a clean tasting fish head soup. It's very savory, salty. You get little bits of ginger in there, so it's got a refreshing taste. And it's got a little hint of sour. So not exactly kiam chai teng sour. I don't know where the sourness is coming from. I don't see anything. There's a key ingredient that's making it sour inside. See if you can find it. This thing. This looks like salted fish to me. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that was salted fish, but because it's been in the soup, the saltiness has been completely extracted and it's got this really bittery umami flavor. Very well balanced. I actually quite like this. Is it a sour plum? 
Gary is guess what's right? It's sour plum. There should be sour plum inside somewhere. Ah, that's where the sourness comes from. It's not all fish head. There's some pretty nice meat pieces as well. That's a good chunky piece. I think this is a very unique flavor. So if you're interested in hot pot but want to try something different, uh, I think this is a very good version of that. So other interesting things about this hot pot, it is charcoal based. So they got a bunch of charcoal inside. So I think that adds to the flavor a bit. Also, unlimited soup. I think that's always a big bonus. Uh, you can always chat tongue. That's got a punchy garlic flavor. It also has tzap, which is like gravy. Omelette itself is fried with lots of oil, so you got this like little crusty piece on top. The, the typical oyster omelette we get here is got that tapioca, chewy flourness to it. This is, as far as I can see so far, off the first bite, it's pure omelette, the tzap, and then the oyster on top. It's like restaurant quality, I would say. Let's try the gui tiao. This is gui tiao? Are you sure? Comments. Is this gui tiao to you? It looks very ho funny to me. Wake flavor, really up there. Other flavors, not so much. It's very clean. There's a bit of Thai ball in there. I think that's where it's getting the saltiness. All right, last one is the prawns. When you're looking for a good fresh prawn, you want thick, hard skin, beautiful color. It's a good looking piece of prawn. Tear off the top. Ooh, there's some juicy bits that's a little bit disgusting, but. I'm having a hard time deciding whether or not there was additional flavors to that prawn or it's just extremely fresh prawn. They cooked it freshly and then they did a very quick chill ice bath to get it cold. And, and I think that's how they, they, they make this because it's not cold like out of the fridge cold. Honestly, I, I do feel this is like really, really fresh prawn. So big ups. I don't know where he's getting this prawn from, but they are quality prawns. All right, guys, we got Mingyo over here. He is the third generation owner. First question I have, right? Yeah. For your prawn, what makes the prawn special or, or different? We do some seasoning, go and steam. After we steam, we will let it cool down. We we'll put it inside the freezer. Then after it's so called, we serve it as a cold prawn. What makes Teochew cuisine Teochew cuisine? For Teochew food, it's not so salty, simple, not so oily. Simple, say lah, uh, tasteless lah. Just a bit. The soup is quite flavorful. The soup is good. With Teochew calling teapot, this is the main ingredient. Yeah, to make the soup more tasty. It's not salted fish. Uh. It's not salted fish. I'm pretty sure that was salted fish. Okay, everyone, that sums it up for today's Teochew extravaganza across four different places. I learned that Teochew cuisine, they focus on more of the quality of ingredients. Their flavors are not as pronounced. It's more about the cleanness uh, and making sure that the original flavors and taste of the ingredients really uh, stand out above all. Then the top three favorite dishes I've had across the day. Number one has to be that braised duck from Paradise Group, the Teochew Paradise Group. Kind of caught me off guard because like I didn't think duck could taste like that. Second was the raw crab. I thought how Jack explained his intentions behind it and what he was trying to create there. Uh, and the last one I would say is the oyster omelet. In my mind, I'm just imagining that and a lot of rice and just like, you know, if you got nothing else to eat, just order that and rice and that was just absolutely delicious. One last favor I gotta ask everyone, you know, my Instagram is just poor in terms of followers. So if you guys are watching this, if you guys like it, find me on Instagram, follow me, please. And if you haven't yet done so already, obviously like and subscribe to Seth Lee's channel. All right, until the next episode, peace. Gary, are you dressed for this place? You know what? I would say generally no, but I think nowadays this look is like some next level rich kid look. Oh wait, now it's some next level rich kid look.